Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the fourth part of What If Goku Was an Elite Saiyan. Sorry for the somewhat long wait, but I'm definitely going to be coming with more videos and parts of this What If for you guys. I really think it's going good so far, and I really think you're going to enjoy what I have in store for you. Please like the video to help with this algorithm and subscribe, it's totally free and you can unsubscribe when you want. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. When it's time, all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Uh Frieza screams and releases his aura to then buff up into his 120 million power level max form. Vegeta isn't phased by this power up, but this is due to his arrogance getting the better of him. In reality, Frieza is more than twice his strength now. He powers up to the absolute maximum and is only able to reach a power level of 50 million. He flies forwards and throws a punch at Frieza, but it's easily evaded. Frieza then lifts his legs to strike out with two kicks to the Saiyan's head. These two kicks knock him off his feet and send him flying meters away. Frieza then throws three more powerful attacks that Vegeta just can't handle. He violently swings outwards to try and attack him, but the attacks just miss. As his lower body is left open, Frieza kicks him in the stomach, then launches out a powerful one-hand energy wave. Vegeta is sent flying back and as he stumbles back, he falls out of his Super Saiyan form. As this happens, everyone gets cautious and the Saiyans run right in to try and help with defeating the Tyrant. Their power levels are extremely low compared to his and because of this, they get destroyed. Frieza throws a swinging kick at Gohan and the noise of his jaw cracking can be heard. Next, he launches out a one-hand energy wave at Raditz to launch him into the air. As this happens, Goku then clashes with Frieza and this is the first of the group to evade one of his attacks. However, he just gets elbowed in the spine and slammed into the ground with a spinning downwards kick. A small crater is formed from this hit and Goku is barely able to get back onto his feet. With the three Saiyans taken out so quickly like this, they are all losing options. Gohan being the least affected since he is the strongest of the three stands and is bubbling with his signature rage. His aura starts to flow around him and the ground rumbles under the power that he emits. His eyes become bloodshot from his anger and he can't stand watching his own father and friends be tortured by this mad emperor. His hair flashes golden and Frieza steps back in reaction, however he realises how much stronger he is than the kid and just flies towards him in arrogance. Throwing a punch, it simply caught and Gohan's eyes flash blue too. His aura starts to gain small trickles of gold energy as he is actually able to kick Frieza back a few metres. Vegeta starts to get more angry too as he contemplates everything that has happened to him in his recent life, all of it, from being almost killed by Raditz to being stomped by some bold earthling. It's all too much to handle for him. Goku and Raditz also stand with a desperate need for power. The power comes in response to a need, not a desire. All four Saiyans power up and Frieza is intimidated by the powers they show. All four Saiyans start to flash with the golden power of the Super Saiyan and after a few seconds, the light becomes blinding. All four Saiyans shout under their combined golden aura and all become Super Saiyans, every single one of them. Gohan's power level is now at 950 million. An absolutely insane power level if you ask me. Next, Raditz has a power level of 800 million and Goku 700 million. Vegeta is still at his ordinary 50 million but isn't bothered about that right now. All he cares about is defeating Frieza. Gohan flies forward as the first fighter then the remaining fighters follow after him. Gohan strikes him back and Goku swings him up into the air with an upwards kick. As he spins around violently, Raditz slams him down from above. Once he starts falling from the sky, Vegeta launches his Gallic Gun. The attack is quite powerful for Vegeta, but Frieza is actually able to catch it and knock it away. Frieza, now bleeding and weak from these attacks, is trying to find an escape plan. Swiftly, he flies up towards space since he knows that the Saiyans cannot survive up there. However, Gohan follows after him and flies faster than him with ease, cutting him off. Once Frieza stops, Gohan starts charging up his Vesenko, then as Frieza tries to fly downwards, Raditz punches him right back up. He then looks to both sides and sees Goku as well as Vegeta stood there. Frieza assumes that Vegeta is the weakest, so he flies towards him and punches him in the face and tries to fly away. However, Raditz punches him in the stomach and wins him so bad that he stops moving. Masenko! Raditz seems to teleport away from his speed and Frieza gets hit by this attack head on, being killed in the wave of Golden Key. Gohan just excels and returns to his base form like the rest of the Saiyans. The humans and Namekians watching from below clap and are more than pleased to know that the planet is saved. 
Dende heals all four of them and here are their new power levels after some minor zen guys. Gohan's is 20 million, Raditz 18 million and Goku 16 million. Vegeta has a power level of 2.5 million, close to Goku's power level but he is still a little off from being the strongest him. In the canon timeline that is. The group have much more time to wait and gain strength to leave back to Earth. Since no one is in a rush, they all just decide to head back to Earth. Vegeta is quite reluctant but he has nowhere to really go back to anyway. He would end up just go on doing missions for Freezer, but since freezer has gone now, he's got nothing to really do. As they all decide to leave, someone comes towards them. The man lands and has a brown cloak over his body. He seems to be around 6 foot 10 and it confuses pretty much everyone there, except for one. Nappa, I thought you were dead, Vegeta replies. In surprise, Ranit also has an identical look. No, I'm not dead and I watched the entire fight with my own eyes. You're all super saiyans. I wish to train with you all, Nappa says, bringing down his hood to show off his bald head. Fine, you better pull your own weight. I'm pretty sure the humans could take you out now, so be ready, Goku replies coldly, just turning back to Freeze's ship that they will use to leave the planet. Nappa's power level has risen to 6,000 from a Zenkai, but that's pretty much it. He's way weaker than even Krillin, so if he tries to fight them head on, he could die. However, he is blessed with the abilities of a mid-class Saiyan. This time everyone drops off at yard right as the ship makes a random detour. I will say this is due to Vegeta moderately damaging the ship's hardware as he stole the Dragon Balls from Freezer. Also, it's only King Cold that remains. He is more curious than rageful about the Saiyans and wants to see their power face to face. The Saiyans all manage to learn instant transmission, but the humans, Krillin and Tien both learn spirit fission. Piccolo is also capable of this technique and Dende kinda sits out, just living a normal life on yard right. Their Zenkai's from constant battle with one another means that they are far, far stronger than their canon counterparts. Since Goku, Gohan and Raditz also have elite DNA now, they are far better. Nappa has gone Super Saiyan a few times but can't really use the power at will. He has managed to surpass all of the non-Saiyans though. Vegeta has actually been able to utilise Grade 2 and Grade 3. Goku and Raditz can also use Grade 2 as well as Gohan. Here are the rankings for the fighters. The weakest fighter is Krillin, he is still very powerful from the useful training that he's had and can actually put up a good fight against Nappa and Piccolo. Next is Tien, his Neo Tribe means that he can handle opponents far stronger than himself so he can actually battle the Saiyans while they are in their base forms. However, he can only compete for a few seconds as his signature attack drains his energy. Next is Piccolo, he is capable of spirit fission like the humans and is much stronger than his canon self. The weakest Saiyan has to be Nappa and it's Nappa by a long shot. He's barely capable of Super Saiyan at times so this means he can't even compete with the others when they are at their full power. Although his base power is commendable and he has some good techniques like his mouth energy wave. Next is Raditz. Raditz hasn't been the best with the concept of Yardrati and training so he hasn't been able to grow the most from it. He has just managed to gain the power of instant transmission and uses it in junction with his double Sunday to form the instant double Sunday. His Super Saiyan Grade 2 is also named Super Raditz by him, alongside Vegeta. Next is Goku. With Goku's in-canon potential and also being an elite Saiyan, he has surpassed Raditz. Also, he is far more capable of Yard Rat training and was able to learn engine transmission and was on the verge of learning Spirit Vision. The strongest, surprisingly, is Gohan. Due to the hyperbolic time training, he actually looks himself in the Cell game, so he is physically much older than his calendar age. His grade 2 is just too much for Ultra Super Saiyan Vegeta since he becomes so slow while doing the technique. He is also stronger than Super Vegeta too. The group return to Earth and the people on Earth haven't actually done much. The Namekians are never there and Guru manages to make one of his subordinates the Grand Elder. This means Purunga lives on and so do the Namekians. Future Trunks deals with King Cole with ease and the rest of the fighters arrive. Piccolo managed to talk with King Kai and stop them from transporting the group back to Earth because he was actually there for a short amount of time. Once they get back, Trunks is more than surprised. Half of the people there he doesn't recognise in the slightest. Immediately, he just sees Goku and asks to fight him lightly. Goku isn't as calm as the Goku Trunks has heard of, so he doesn't take the fight lightly. So you're a Super Saiyan too. Let's see what you've got, he replies, powering up into his grade 2 form. Trunks is taken aback by the muscle mass increase but just continues and transforms into Super Saiyan also. Violently he approaches him and swings his sword but Goku just kicks out his chest knocking him out of Super Saiyan. He flies through an entire rock wall and Goku even looks at his steaming shoe in surprise. Also Vegeta, Raditz and Nappa still wear Saiyan armour as they refuse to wear the ugly Ardrassian clothing. They all rock their original armour but Vegeta gets rid of his shoulder pads. 
Nappa and Raddit still have theirs though. How are you so strong? How did you get so muscly like that? Trunks asks, walking back with a bad injury on his back. We trained and got stronger. You don't seem to have done much. Who are you and why are you here? Goku asks, returning to his base form. He explains all of the info to just Goku and he gets the gist of what's going on. Trunks leaves and the group get ready for the androids. Goku, Raditz, Gohan and Piccolo group up to do some training while Vegeta and Nappa train on their own. Nappa is also able to use the gravity chamber to increase his level of training. From his high level training with Vegeta, he is able to reach the level of Vegeta at this time in the canon timeline. Basically meaning that Nappa from this what if is equal to canon Vegeta. Piccolo has also decided to fuse with Kami early as he is clearly lagging behind the Saiyans. Now he is around equal to the Uzaru forms of the Saiyans but he isn't near their Super Saiyan forms though. Vegeta, Gohan, Goku and Raditz have Super Saiyan 2 but Nappa is lagging behind slightly. Nappa now has Super Saiyan Grade 1 and 2 so is doing somewhat well for himself. Tien, Krillin and Yamcha all train together and manage to actually make some good progress. Tien has negated most of the detriments when using his Neo Tri-Beam. Krillin can also use his destructive disc well and can actually spit out many of them in a short time if needed. Yamcha's Spirit Ball is also useful for surprise attacks. Raditz also has a kill at this time, like Vegeta. Taking heavy inspiration from Massacre X here, I'll just say that he has a kid with launch. However, I'm not saying it'll be Ranch, but instead just a kid called Raditz Jr. He looks pretty similar to Raditz and keeps a lot of his features too. He is born with a power level of 850, so he is slightly stronger than Gohan when he was born. Also, he is the same age as Trunks, only being older by a few odd months. The androids attack and everything goes similar to canon until they arrive at Sasebo. Goku flies away with the two androids to not hurt the other humans and faces them. The only thing that changes is that Yamcha isn't taken down and almost killed. That is because Yamcha wasn't actually the first to meet these two androids. He powers up into a Super Saiyan and surprisingly doesn't buff up any further. I wouldn't need any other form to bring you both down, Goku claims, showing off his new and improved aura. Swiftly, he blasts off his feet and catches Dr. Jiro off guard by how fast he is. Goku punches him in the face and doesn't hold back with the punch. Due to this, his head seems to crack out of place and spin 180 degrees. However, he is still alive. Android 19 comes from behind Goku to try and attack and kill him. However, Goku blocks and spin kicks the android away, destroying a good chunk of its parts. As Dr. Jiro tries to fire down an energy beam, Goku zooms away with flight then shoots out several key blasts to Android 19 that chases him. These attacks completely destroy 19 and Goku launches a one-hand energy wave to vaporize the weak android. Immediately, Dr. Jiro weighs up the odds and flies away at top speed to try and activate the other androids. These androids being Android 17 and 18. The group might be stronger, but if they don't use Super Saiyan, they are far outmatched. The only people here who can actually catch up to him are Piccolo and Goku. Both fighters follow after him and actually close in on him quite quickly. However, Goku is visibly breathing as he does this and Piccolo is quite confused. Swiveling around, Dr. Jiro shoots out his signature photon wave and goes on to activate Android 17 and 18. Goku reverts to his base and starts panting uncontrollably, feeling incredibly weak. He then falls as he passes out but Yamcha catches him and gets him back to his home to rest and heal. Gohan, who is the strongest, stays further ahead of the rest of the fighters to try and scout out the area. In seconds, he sees the androids flying off into the distance. This makes him catch up to them and he is very confused as to what's going on. Where are you going? He states calmly, awaiting a response. We're not here for any of you, Gohan. We're here for your father, Goku, Android 17 says in a patronising tone, since he is young. Gohan just doesn't get affected by this and doesn't move either. I'm not going to let you do anything to my father, he shouts, beginning to ascend into the next form. Both of them are already surprised by his blonde hair, but then he ascends into Super Saiyan 2. His electricity crackles around his body and his hair stands on end, resembling himself in the Cell games. In a fit of rage, he zooms forwards and punches 18. His fist rips through her chest and he launches an energy beam with his open hand. 18 is propelled downwards and is heavily injured, leaving 17 to fight Gohan. They both clash and Gohan punches him away with his slam alone. As the android is jerked backwards, Gohan punches him in the stomach then swivel kicks higher up acrobatically. As he zooms upwards, Gohan screams and releases a massive key blast, destroying android 17 in the blasts. All that is left are his clothes and a bit of metal that all drop to the ground. You're mine, 18 shouts towards Gohan, flying up without the slightest bit of tiredness in her voice. 
she punches him in the chest and there's literally no movement from him whatsoever. He just punches her in the face and kicks her in the stomach, throwing her meters back, but is also released in between them. Android 18 flies up to him to try and land the powerful blow, but Gohan just screams and launches a Kamehameha, vaporizing her body in the blast. The two androids have been defeated just like that and Gohan is pretty much unscathed. Just as Gohan is about to leave, the third android makes his appearance, Android 16. He takes off the ends of his arms and launches a powerful key blast. Since Gohan has reverted to his base, he is now vulnerable. The key blasts hit him, they hit him hard. They cause a lot of damage and he is left very injured. Sixteen then takes a chance to fly right at him and throw some attacks of his own. However, Gohan shouts and transforms into a Super Saiyan Grade 2 form. His muscles enlarge but not at the cost of his speed and he flies directly at Sixteen. They clash and Gohan is clearly stronger, 16's arm literally breaks from the collision and Gohan launches another beam of energy to destroy him entirely. All that is left is his head and lower legs that just fall to the ground. So that will conclude the fourth part of what if Goku was an elite Saiyan. Tell me something you liked about the video or something I should improve on for the next part. Thanks for all the support on this what if, it's been doing really well lately. And I plan to continue this what if on until the very last arc of the Dragon Ball Super manga. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.